Hi, this is Jeff Zeig. I'm the founder and director of the Milton Erickson Foundation in Phoenix, Arizona. But right now, I'm in New York City where I've completed a master class, and I'm here with another five-minute tip for therapists. This particular tip, I want to talk about self-hypnosis. There's lots of people who firmly believe that self-hypnosis is a separate state, and that's not my philosophy. It's unusual because most experts would say that all hypnosis is self hypnosis. I don't think of hypnosis that way. I think about hypnosis as being a combination of elements, and if you followed some of the previous uh, uh, five-minute therapy tips, you've understood the elements that I think that you stimulate into play when you're doing hypnosis. Changes in attention, changes in intensity, dissociation, and what I want to focus on today is responsiveness, building responsiveness. It's my firm belief that hypnosis Hypnosis is a state of communication in which the person responds to the understructure of the communication. Hypnosis is the technology of using psychological level communication. All communication happens on both a social level and a psychological level. There's a, a level of uh, denotation and a level of connotation. When somebody is in a hypnotic state, they're responding to the meaning of the communication. Now, if somebody is meditating or if somebody is in a state of mindfulness or active imagination or autogenic training, they are responding to a series of internal events. Either they have changed their attention, changed the intensity of their experience or dissociated and any of those three psychological elements can be done in a combination that can be contextualized as an altered state, either relaxation, autogenic training, training or uh, mindfulness or meditation. What makes hypnosis different is that it's a communicational event. In my estimation, uh, hypnosis has to happen in a relationship. Marriage as a concept, marriage perhaps considered as a state has to be an interpersonal event. You can't have self-marriage. Marriage requires you to be in relationship. In my estimation, hypnosis requires a relationship. It's been an epistemological error to think about hypnosis as a distinct trance state that is uh, that can't be compared to meditation or mindfulness because anything that you can do uh, in, uh, uh, in a trance state, an individualized trance state, can be done in any of those different areas. It's my theory, and I've written this in a book called Hypnotic Induction, that hypnosis necessitates an interpersonal event where the person is responding to the meaning of the communication. The induction of hypnosis is over when the person is responding to the understructure of the communication. Now, if you think about this in terms of induction and utilization, which is a convenient distinction, in the induction, it's as if you're saying A, because you mean B in order to get response C. A could be that you're talking with a person about walking on the beach as an induction technique, but you mean here are elements of how to alter your attention, how to alter intensity, how to dissociate in order to get response C, where the person starts to respond to the meaning of the communication. Why is this important? It's important because in the therapy se se section, induction, utilization, therapy, in the therapy section, you may be talking with somebody about a metaphor. For example, you're talking with somebody about taking a walk through the forest, but what you mean is how to get over the problem in order for the person to have a more adaptive realization about their potentialities. Now, if your therapy is going to be based on saying something and indicating something else, then the induction paves the way for the therapy. The induction ends when the person starts to respond to the understructure of the communication. That can be something very simple. For example, if I'm uh, talking idiomatically with somebody during an induction and I'm saying something like, 
as you're sitting here, as you're listening to me, as you're focusing inside, as you begin to feel an increasing sense of comfort, an increasing sense of well-being, an increasing sense of relaxation, suddenly there can be memories that come to mind that suddenly give you a new appraisal, a new understanding, and you can begin to move forward into a more comfortable, confident realization. Now, if the person responds to the meaning of that idiom by moving forward, that person is responding to the understructure of the communication. I think it was absolutely true of Milton Erickson that the utilization of trance was predicated on responsiveness. When the person started responding to meaning, it's at that moment that the induction be could be considered over and the utilization section of the hypnotic experience could begin. Now, I'm certain that I'm at odds with Milton Erickson, who firmly believed in self-hypnosis as a distinct state, but my social psychological perspective is different, and it's oriented towards towards defining hypnosis as I would define marriage. There's some states that are in independent uh, and personalized. You can change your attention, refocus your attention. You don't need somebody there to do that. There are some states that are contextualized. For example, you can feel faith more intently if you're in a church or a synagogue than you can if you're just doing that individually at home. There are other states that are dependent on social interaction, and I would like to firmly put hypnosis into that category, that hypnosis is something that is dependent on social responsiveness. The response to implication, which is a normal function, it's the way in which two people who don't even know each other could be walking uh, in a shopping center next to each other and suddenly they would be synchronizing them, their steps. The way in which two people who are sleeping together will synchronize their breathing rhythm. We are designed as creatures who will respond implicitly, where in hypnosis is the technology of using implicit communication and it's a social event. This is Jeff Zeig. Here I am in New York with another five minute tip for therapists. Hi, this is Jeff Zeig. Here I am at the offices of the Milton Erickson Foundation in Phoenix, Arizona. But December 6 through 9, I'll be in San Francisco for the Brief Therapy Conference. I started the Brief Therapy Conference in 1988, I think, where we organized the first multidisciplinary conference that brought together practitioners of brief therapy to talk about state-of-the-art methods in helping people to get out of therapy as quickly as possible. There are many different schools of brief therapy, psychoanalytic schools of brief therapy, gestalt schools of brief therapy, cognitive behavioral schools of brief therapy, systemic schools of brief therapy, and the idea was to bring together practitioners from different schools. Our focus in this brief therapy conference is especially about treating disorders of anxiety, depression, and trauma. We've had some of the great experts in the world, uh, people like Bessel van der Kock talking about trauma, uh, people that are talking about how you can work with families when they are suffering from anxiety, depression, and trauma, experts on cognitive behavior therapy, solution-focused therapy. I really invite you to go to our website, brieftherapyconference.com. It's a embarrassment of riches, an incredible array of faculty who are state of the art and presenting their latest methods of working with anxiety, depression, and trauma. We also have programs on uh, multicultural therapy. We have a pre-conference day if you need ethics credits, if you want to learn about some of the essentials of hypnosis. We have a post-conference day in which Michael Yapko and I will do a master class on treating, where we actually do treatment of people in the particular style that we work on and we're able to comment on each other. So I invite you December 6 through 9, uh, San Francisco Bay Area, brieftherapyconference.com. Please join us. There are significant discounts for registering early. Thank you.